Live from the Fairmont Hotel in San Jose, California, it's The Cube at Big Data SV 2015. Welcome back everyone. We are here live in Silicon Valley for Big Data SV. This is theCUBE, our flagship program. We go out to the events and extract the signal from the noise. I'm John Furrier with Silicon Angle, and we got uh, back into the conversation about open source. We got Sean Connolly, VP of Corporate Strategy at Hortonworks, and Ryan Peterson, Chief Strategist for the Emerging Technologies uh, Division within EMC. Guys, welcome to theCUBE again. Thanks, John. Um, so, um, EMC, Hortonworks, announcement. Give us the update. A lot of partnering going on, a lot of high-fiving uh, at this <laughs> event. Um, and, and talk about the, the context of the event, okay? There's a lot of partnering. You guys have been partnering uh, for a long time. Hortonworks is in your DNA. Yeah, exactly. EMC is now, uh, especially the Emerging Technologies Division, is very much in the market, right? They're not um, you know, coming in whenever they want. They're actually mm -hmm. part of the strategy is to get in and be open, be part of the community. Um, talk about the, the relationship in context to this new inside out organization of open source that's happening in front of us. And the, and the accelerant to get to value. Right. That seems to be the theme at this event. Customers want value, they're right. part of the conversation. It's community driven. Give us some context to the yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll sort of start up, because you brought up the customer and when we were talking uh, you know, yesterday with the uh, pivotal half of the uh, Federation, right? Um, it, it, it's, what we're doing here is customer driven, right? And so we have a, a variety of joint customers who asked us to make sure, particularly around um, you know, the Hadoop platform uh, on EMC storage, mm -hmm. particularly some of their emerging storage technologies, to work together to make sure it works seamlessly so they can get the value out of their existing investments. Mm -hmm. And you know, you could walk through a little bit of the outline of that, but I think we're executing really well. Yeah, I think uh, you know we have six thousand customers using Isilon, uh, exabytes of data, you know, available. And going back to that whole driving value, you know, we we can now take that information, have Portmore's come in, attach to the information, and get uh, unique insights very quickly, as opposed to having to think about starting up a whole new architecture, uh, copying the data from one place over to that architecture, and having to run that same analytics. So it just gives you kind of that direct remote access into the data sets. You know, we had um, you know Microsoft on earlier. Actually, Revolution Analytics is now part of Microsoft. You know, um, David Smith, and you know, the discussion that's coming out of the Apache Software Foundation and your thing is that this whole fragmentation and all this stuff is going on. This conversation. So I want you guys to talk about one one concept that you can. The difference between fragmentation and choice. Okay, and that's a really important nuance, right? So fragmentation means certain thing I don't want to give my difference, but I want you to hear your <laughs> version. Fragmentation, unification, choice. Customers want choice, they don't want lock-in. Yep. So EMC, you have a lot of partnerships and you guys partner all the time. So, you know, for the benefit of the customer, what does fragmentation mean and what does choice mean? And are they mutually exclusive and what is that? That seems to be a debate this week about fragmentation of standards. Well, Open source is a done deal, certainly we know that. But I think certainly the, the ODP initiative is a great example of how you're taking some of the components and starting to standardize them so that you can get to a, a place where it's a little bit of cleaner implementation. Uh, I think the, the idea that uh, the Hadoop ecosystem was built to be somewhat of a fragmented uh, components that could be swapped out very easily, uh, find you know was, this one's good and replace it with another, well, at the same time, we're finding that uh, customers are having problems with, well, which one? Is it this one? Is it that one? Is it, should I, what's the best SQL on Hadoop Engine, et cetera? So it's not good. Fragmentation is bad. Well, I think it's good for development, but uh, bad for uh, getting really clean implementations, right? Solutions. Yeah, you need really good solutions, tight solutions. From a customer be, standpoint. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. And choice, what does that mean? I mean, in terms of your, from your view, because I mean, you have a variety of portfolio products, obviously you have two divisions now, emerging technologies. And you got yeah, absolutely. Know. I think there's a, uh, benefits to different kinds, and I'll, I'll talk about storage. You know, we have this ECS product we launched. It's all about uh, object-based stores, uh, large-scale geographic dispersion. That's something that uh, Isilon product isn't really that great at. So from a customer choice perspective, you've got to install the right tool for the right job at the exact same time, Hadoop has uh, shown that it's this really great system for analyzing content. We want all of that data set to be available for our customers and 
be usable and, and uh, extrapolate value very quickly. And when I, when I think of fragmentation, there's, uh, I view it at a couple of different layers, right? So there's, there's market fragmentation and forcing the ecosystem to have to make it more complicated for them to choose to be able to plug in and get the value, right? And I think that was around the common core stuff is if you can rye around some commonality, then it takes a little guess, more you know, of the guesswork out ecosystem plug in cleanly and not be bogged down with that level of fragmentation. With the core concept. Yes. But then there's, um, you know, and that's market fragmentation. You can do things to help coalesce and make the market function better, right, and mm -hmm. remove some of that friction. Um, then there's architectural fragmentation, right, the classic silos, right? And so it's incumbent upon vendors like ourselves to actually work together mm -hmm. to develop architectures that reduce that fragmentation, right? Um, so, you know, it, it's easy to talk fragmentation. You have to qualify it on specifically what are you talking about, right? Um, I like to solve market fragmentation, friction issues, architectural mm -hmm. fragmentation issues. Um, this announcement, frankly, is around architectural choice, right? Mm -hmm. um, if we're able to uh, allow our customers to deploy and get value from a Hadoop So you're platform, eliminating market, uh, architectural fragmentation exactly. with this announcement. Exactly. But, so, right. so what you're saying, if I hear you correctly, then market fragmentation is a little bit easier to deal with because it's out in the open. Architectural is where the, the tripwires are. Right? Uh, is that, is that kind um, of there's work to be done in both, yeah. right? Um, but at the end of the day, it requires uh, you know, uh, vendors, particularly in an architectural fragmentation uh, situation, to, if, if there's skirmish areas, identify what those skirmish areas are and then collaborate around the areas, um, listen to the customers. Like when I was at JBoss early days, you know, I formed a relationship with Microsoft. I was like, let's put Java versus .NET aside. Mm -hmm. Let's optimize this platform on, on top of your platform. How, do, how does it integrate with the rest of your ecosystem? Because the customers That's are asking unification. for That's unification. That's yep. a unifying. But, and that's a unifying architectural approach. Yeah. Previously, it wasn't able to be done. Architecturally, you remove the issues. So, I, so I'm an I'm I'm executive, I'm, I'm in business school, I'm a strategist, I want mm -hmm. lock in, I want to win the battle, mm -hmm. I got the, 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 the smart bombs built in. That's where fragmentation can help me if I'm that evil genius. It, it, I'll say, hey, I'll go into the architecture. No one's looking, I'll wire these two things together so that I lock in. Is that, mm -hmm. is that what the, the old way used to be? Two, two approaches are fragment the market, take a piece of the puzzle, right, and you know, own that yeah. area. Another thing, and we talked you know, a little bit yesterday, is make the pie as big as possible, yeah. right? And then your slice is as big as it can be. Um, and if the pie includes architectural choice in that, where you're, you're plugging in and enabling choice, then inherently that pie is going to get bigger because the customer has a lot more so options. talk about the announcement now, the specifics of your yeah. announcement with this piece here. Is it architectural unification and core? Yeah, I'd say th taking a little further to the full validation and kind yeah. of proven nature of it. It's taking all these kind of components, like we said, and trying to lock it down to something that's really uh, enterprise class and quality. Mm -hmm. uh, one of the things that's great about uh, what Hortworks has done is they've, they've taken all of the uh, tool sets and created these test suites, right? They, they test this, see this, see if this works, uh, kerberize, non-kerberize, this particular tool versus that tool, and then put that over the top of our different storage technologies and run a myriad of tests. I think it was over 6,000 tests. And so as a result of us passing 6,000 plus tests, uh, that's when they said, okay, what, you know, we're good to go, we're, we can certify this platform. And that just goes And vice versa, that you get certification on an open source platform like Hadoop, right. they get access to customer base, so it's kind well, of a win-win, right? At, win, at, win, at win. the end of the day, the customer's happy because they know we work together, mm -hmm. yeah. and it, it didn't run through just a Barney set of 10 tests. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It was real deep, rigorous testing. So there was some real integration testing Absolutely. Oh, joint yeah. engineer, yeah. that's what that's the whole definition of joint engineering deep certification, yeah. right? And 6,000 tests, a lot to pass through. Um, it's run the gauntlet of yep. uh, HTP yeah. on Isilon. Frankly, it's the best and most secure uh, integration out there today on the market. You know, we had um, uh, the Dean of Big Data on uh, Bill Schmarzo earlier, um, <laughs> who's been a CUBE alumni, actually wrote a book and uh, launched it on the CUBE uh, by uh, Wiley, great mm -hmm. publisher. Um, and he says, you know, he goes talk to customers all the time, we'd love to hear the customer stories. And, you know, you know I said, what's the big takeaway this year? You know, bottom mm -hmm. line for him. And his answer was simply, Hadoop's a done deal. I mean, like, beyond done, it's like, yeah. no longer discussion, so it's, there's no more discussion, Hadoop is it. Yep. There's no, not a question of when, everyone's doing it. Mm -hmm. So like, that's a fact. Mm -hmm. So that's cool, so customers look at Hadoop. So now it comes back down to the EMC equation, you guys have huge install base. Mm -hmm. What does this mean for you guys now? You have a lot of customers, certainly doing POCs, maybe going to production with Hadoop at large scale, medium scales or whatnot, but they got a lot of drives laying around, you got mm -hmm. tons of new stuff happening. What does this mean for you guys? I think, I look at historically, when we came out with uh, systems like Symmetrix and the VMAX world, and it was big block stores, and the RDBMS was getting bigger. 
uh, Yard BMS, it started out with, well, it's a great tool set, but where's the app? And now we're in that same position, right? The, the infrastructure has been built out, Hadoop has gotten stable, and it's gotten to the point where we can start building the applications over the top. So I think this is the year of deriving real value and repeatable value, because I think uh, Hadoop has kind of been a science project for many customers. And we get to the point now where we can start building actual applications, maybe it's uh, fraud analytics applications for banking. Take that and repeat it over and over and over for various banks and we can start creating real value. That's a repeatable process. I think that's the next big step. Yeah, and then we had a chair kicked around the cube this week and, and today and was amplified. We've got to get out of this proof of concept business and yeah. get into the proof of value business. Mm -hmm. so, so with that, what have you guys seen as key touch points that you can point to and say, hey, there's some real value proofs coming to the market. Mm -hmm. I mean, real value, not like proof of concepts, but like where the Hadoop thing is certainly making a big difference. Can you guys share any, any stories around that regard? Yeah. I mean, you know, we play across a wide range of industries, um, in our, particularly in our area, ingest, ingesting, uh, you know, more sensor internet of things, use mm -hmm. cases, high speed analytics mixed with uh, sort of deep historical analytics is a very common pattern. Um, um, you know, everybody talks about the 360 degree view pattern. We see it not only customer, we see it 360 degree, degree view of product, of supply chain. We're actually seeing some advanced use cases where telemetry into the customers and their buying patterns geographically, you're actually able to optimize the supply chain to get the right inventory flow through um, into the right areas um, based on fairly advanced analytics. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it'll be interesting to see the impact of big data on classic supply chain thinking. Uh, I think that's that's something that's going to be playing out um, uh, over the coming years as well. Well, that's real value. You start to get into the ROI equations. Yeah, I mean, not, there's real like, oh, revenue. Someone's happy and someone's right? smiley face, a happy customer. Talk yeah. about real money. Real revenue yeah. with better <laughs> margins on that revenue. Yeah. And that's what, we're, what we hear yeah. in those yeah. types of use cases. I like to define those as kind of three major categories. You have the kind of CEO conversation. Can I create a new business for you? The CFO conversation, can I save and optimize your business, make, make, uh, save you money? And then there's this third category that's my favorite, which is that change the world category. You may not have a financial value, but uh, the, just the, the personal value you get out of it is incredible. So I think I have a great, great customer example where they, uh, they set it up and pulled out uh, call detail records and started looking and analyzing the content. And as a result, they were able to you know, find missing children and return them to their parents and things like that. And I think you really can't quantify how important the technology has become uh, until you start seeing those kinds of uh, messages come through. So uh, the, the easy part's going to be building an application to do fraud analytics. Uh, the hard part's going to be, you know, how can we use those, these technologies to save the world? So i got to ask you both, and Ryan, we'll start with you, because you, obviously EMC has a lot of customer base, mm -hmm. big in, installed in, uh, incumbent uh, positions, right? So mm -hmm. um, we were talking earlier, especially in big data, and you know, we've, we have the same, same issue with our crowd chat thing, we got to talk to social media, same thing. It's like, mm -hmm. oh, I don't, need an, I don't need another platform. So people are tired of, coming in, people selling a platform of mm -hmm. something. Mm -hmm. I mean, so brings up the question of time to value, right? So this comes down to um, what is the tooling, what is the platform where someone can get to value fast mm -hmm. in the enterprise? So Hoop Dupe for the enterprise certainly is a, is a real deal. Mm -hmm. What is that speed to value that you're seeing that customers can do without having to just roll out a full on platform? Are you seeing, because you, you're dealing with large customers, so mm -hmm. it's not as simple as, hey, all our reps from Hadoop, drop it in. I mean, you can drop, you got personal services and whatnot, but like, I don't want to have to spend a ton to go look at value. I think the easy thing from my perspective is go set up a quick virtual machine or, or two on, and, and get a Hadoop system set up and get to the point where you can look at some of your data. Um, I think that the one that everyone likes to talk about is ETL, right? That, that seems to be a, a quick and easy, uh, save yourself a lot of money because the ETL system is typically fairly expensive and, uh, and EDWs are even more somewhat expensive. And so if you can figure out a way to, uh, to save some money through that process, that's a, usually a good way to, to provide in, instantaneous value. Um, at the same time, I think that uh, our perspective is look at storage from a protocol perspective. So all the different kinds of tools that you ever may need to use, whether it's a, uh, an endpoint uh, sensor level, or if it's a Microsoft device, or a Unix device, or any, any sort of particular item, being able to get information in and out of that particular protocol is going to save the customer a lot of time and money and get them to faster results. Sean, what's your take on what do you see? I see you have a, a breadth of different industries. What's the low-hanging fruit from that you see? Well, just it's, anecdotally, just, just yeah. You know. Well, it isn't. I mean, we see a very prescriptive journey, um, and actually, in the first wave of Hadoop adoption, you know, I think the uh, the uh, ETL uh, offload and that optimization path freed up budget. Mm -hmm. um, whenever I talk to customers, I was like, 
free up your budget, that's great. Pick two applications. Mm. If you don't, you will stall, right? Um, it's not about saving costs. Fighting more, more off they can chew than they can chew, or is no, it more of no, it's, scope issues? From my perspective, the successful deployments that I've seen are application driven, right? Business driven. And frankly, I'd rather have the cluster st uh, start small and then add in two, four, eight, yeah. 16 apps, then try and assemble a data lake to cut costs and then figure out what, now what can I do with that, right? And so the first wave was let me assemble all my data. Maybe I might figure out something. I'm less a fan of that approach, frankly. I'm more a fan of you know, start with some concrete applications you might chase, mm -hmm. optimize some of your data architecture along the way to free up the budget to fund those, and then have an onboarding strategy so where- So get a proof point, knock down, hit a few singles, you know, yep. don't try for the defenses. Exactly. Uh, st start small, it will grow. Like I said, you know, you don't have to work at filling the lake. If you have successful applications, the lake will be filled. Yeah. Right. Like data lakes again, you know, I love that term, uh, data lake, I'm more like a data ocean these days where customers see this tsunami, but, mm -hmm. but uh, not that's going to get adopted anytime it's a, soon. It's, <laughs> it, know, it's, um, a, it's a journey to that lake yeah. is the point. Lakes cool. seem boring to me. Lakes, yeah. you play in a lake, you, you know, you, you know you ocean, you lake, go to the Pacific yeah. Ocean, you, get, you, get, you can die. But no, the thing is, is that the data business, <laughs> the data business is really heavy right now. If you look uh, at the dynamics, yeah. I mean, yeah. real time and you know, things. So I got to ask you, what's the next wave? I mean, you know, as a company, if they don't get the data strategy right, they literally could go out of business. Mm -hmm. The competitive pressures are strong. So, so with that, what is the next wave? What are customers looking at? So I, the, what I see is the advanced analytics, fast analytics, right? Those situations are, are popping up left and right. Mm -hmm. uh, ultimately, I do think, and we're even seeing some of the technology emerge, uh, transactional uh, semantics will come in and around the platform. I think that's you know, going to play out, but right now, where a lot of businesses um, are headed, and I heard it on the show floor like at least a dozen times, is um, if I'm a manufacturing company, right? I want sensors on my assembly line so I can get out ahead and be um, proactive in the maintenance of, of that, but I also want deep uh, analytics and you know, archival type analytics scenarios all on one platform. And that, that fast combined with deep is a common pattern. Sounds seeing. like an ocean to me. What's your take on the... Uh um, it's a speedboat. Uh, on the, I, on the, I feel like I'm a, actually Lake Tahoe had six foot waves this winter, so uh, <laughs> a couple weeks ago. So it's like an ocean. Yeah. No, I, I, you know, it's interesting. I love that question, by the way. And I feel like customers, uh, in general, any company needs to be thinking about how they replace themselves. <laughs> and I think that uh, what, what Hadoop can bring to the table is taking all of the data that they already have and figuring out how to use that to replace themselves. And I think it's a great, a good testament of this. Is you know, I think Uber is a great, great example. I mean, how many people have been switching over from using taxi cabs into Uber and, and the taxi cab companies are really hurting as a result. And yeah. I think that any company who thinks that they're safe is, is, uh, is, is not safe. Yeah, and I so would think the Uber is a great example. I, mean, I was just going to the taxi line in front of the hotel. I'm like, look at these guys waiting around. I'm like, they're going to they're, you know, they're be extinct soon. I mean, why are they standing on the sidewalk waiting for people in the cab lines? Like, yeah. no one's going to the cab well, line. And, and when we talk about these different patterns, right, and it gets back to you know, some of the work you guys have, the broad, particularly in the emerging technologies, we have mm -hmm. the ice line stuff that we're talking about here today, mm -hmm. but there's you know, the, uh, you know, the SSD technologies, there are mm -hmm. higher speed technologies, there's cloud you know, type technologies. And the reality is you need an architecture that's going to support that whole gamut, right? All right, so talk about the deal now between you guys. So what specifically are you announcing? What's the product integration? What's the offering? Is it GA? Is it just certification? Give the details. So today it's certification. We've, we've gotten through, like I said, over 6,000 tests, uh, full validation, ready to go. And uh, now we're ready to get, start going to market. We've got, uh, we've got some customer base that started off a little earlier before certification that uh, is, is now very excited to see that we have a joint, joint supported offering. So is it a joint sales go to market or are you going to market together? Is they selling through you? So how does just, um, can you share that? Is it public? Yeah, today I think it's meeting the channel, but uh, yeah. certainly there's opportunity and discussions about yeah. uh, how that will more. Our, our fields have been engaged for a while mm -hmm. um, and that's really informed a lot of the work that we were doing. But we really wanted to make sure we, you know, tightened the screws and made sure that we blessed it so there weren't sharp edges. 
Um, there weren't any insecurities, and it actually worked across the full platform, and that's really where we spent our time. So Ryan, talk about EMC, obviously, Emerging Technologies, done some really amazing work, you know, with a Viper, and then we've seen mm -hmm. a lot of stuff, certainly from Viper, and you got the big data stuff going, clouds happening, mm -hmm. uh, a lot of good stuff. What is the EMC culture like now? I see Jeremy Burton has brought a, a lot of mojo there. We interviewed him when theCUBE just started in 2010, mm -hmm. when his first week on the job, and now he's president, and we have an, a, a chat with him on Friday, crowd chat, ask him anything at 10 o'clock on Friday the 20th, a little plug up for, for Jeremy Burton. Mm -hmm. but he a culture of risk-taking and big ideas, right? Mm -hmm. So is getting in, into the trenches is going to be a challenge for EMC. I mean, EMC has always been a field-driven company on the sales side. Mm -hmm. Can you bring that same mojo into the community world? And what's the strategy? What's the plan? What's the culture like? Is the mindset ready? Is it everyone's running that way now? Or is it just starting? Or is it already happening? Yeah, it's very interesting because we've, uh, I mean, just over the last uh, few weeks, we've seen things like we're doing more uh, open source contributions. Uh, obviously, you know, some of our federation partners, we've been uh, taking things completely open sourcing uh, components. And I think this is a, a big shift in thinking from, you know, traditional old EMC thinking to new. I think the, the Emerging Technologies Division is a great example of where, uh, whether it's acquisition or a, a build from scratch, we're, we're creating new technologies that uh, are intended to replace ourselves and get to the point where we can uh, constantly keep up with the latest and Hence the separation of the different focus, you also the other groups more the, the blocking and tackling bread and butter EMC, mm -hmm. except for you know, Extreme IO, that's not the flash stuff that's built in. So this is, this is just a, a new team, go invent the future, is that kind of the mindset? It is, it's, it's really about, uh, let's, let's see what the future looks like and start to uh, build out those technologies and, and it's things like uh, scale out, it's things like big data and uh, we're an yeah. object in cloud and, and we're really figuring out how do we tackle what the future looks like and learn how to replace ourselves. Well, we're psyched to broadcast on theCUBE. We've been following EMC now. It's like I said, since 2010, the Cube, you guys have been great supports. Thanks so much for the support. And obviously, Jeremy Burton's a visionary. We love that guy. So uh, he's making some great changes. And, you know, Microsoft now under Satya Nadella, similar mojo going mm -hmm. on. You know, since it's no longer about uh, Office and, and Windows, mm -hmm. you've got a guy who knows cloud. You've seen a lot more open source. They donated great reference design to open compute. So mm -hmm. this is the new model, right? I mean, it's exciting the, days. So what's your take on this? I mean, and what is the new formula of success in, in open source, this new generation? The young guns are coming up. <laughs> We're all the old guys now. Look <laughs> the, at the that. young guns. Yeah, I don't even grow a goatee anymore. It'd be all white, you know, but if I did, it would be like we, all we white. We try to synchronize you know, the goatees. Yeah, yeah exactly. No, but the, the, but there's a new, I couldn't there's grow a new, my out fast <laughs> enough. There's a new school. What's, 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 retained, what's retained in the mall and what's new, what's developing? I, yeah, I think, it, I think it enables a more open way of uh, collaborating. Um, and frankly, ha the new organization has made it easier to collaborate across multiple fronts. Mm -hmm. um, so from my perspective, you know, uh, less friction in the collaboration is a good thing, right? Um, and I think that's, that's what we're seeing. We're beginning to see those yeah. walls uh, be knocked People go faster too when you have decision making that's not like five chains yeah. of command across organizations, right? Yeah, yeah it guys. is interesting. We're seeing, uh, you know, open source, there's a religion there. And the religion is getting is morphing a tiny bit. So I, I love the concept that uh, that open source is starting to feel comfortable working with some of the closed source vendors. Because I think when it comes down to it, we're all going to be in the same the same bucket. Yeah. Customers are going to choose different things for different reasons. Open source, I think, really helps uh, grow out technologies very quickly. Um, at the same time, I think. Uh, the, the vendors that ultimately take those components and build them into something that's a little more secured or more enterprise class, it's gonna, they're, they're both going to exist in, in, uh, in harmony. Well, it's been great uh, to watch everybody. I'm, certainly, we've been watching this evolve. I remember when Pat Gelsinger was uh, at EMC, we said, hey, you don't get in the sandbox and throw sand around this open source world. You've got to be careful. Mm -hmm. You guys have to evolve after the Federation with Pivotal. You guys have been very successful. Cloudera, the whole ecosystem is, there's a ton of fruit on all the trees. There's plenty of, plenty of beachhead to be had in this oh, yeah. trillion dollar TAM opportunity total addressable market. So, you know, it's, it's like a growth machine. Absolutely. Uh, so good luck guys, we'll keep track. And thanks for coming on theCUBE. Yeah, thanks John. Uh, Hortonworks and EMC, this is theCUBE live in Silicon Valley. I'm John Furrier, we'll be right back after this short break.